How Photosynthesis Affected the Atmosphere by kscience.com 4.5 billion years ago, the Earth's atmosphere was very different to today's atmosphere. Ancient Earth had a lot of volcanic activity, which caused Earth to be very hot and drastically affected Earth's atmosphere. Whereas in today's Earth, there is a lot less volcanic activity, so our atmosphere is very different. It was very hot 4.5 billion years ago due to the large amounts of volcanic activity, whereas it is much cooler in today's atmosphere as there is a lot less volcanic activity. There was mainly carbon dioxide present in Earth's early atmosphere, whereas in today's atmosphere there is 0.04% carbon dioxide. This is a very big change due to several reasons. There was lots of water vapour in Earth's early atmosphere and there's very little water vapour in today's atmosphere compared to what it was like four and a half billion years ago. There were no oceans 4.5 billion years ago, whereas in today's Earth we know there are a lot of oceans. There was no oxygen in Earth's atmosphere 4.5 billion years ago, but in today's atmosphere it is made up of 21% oxygen, a very big difference. So with so many changes, what caused this? It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're going to learn how carbon dioxide and oxygen levels have been affected by unicellular organisms, such as cyanobacteria and algae. We'll then move on to how plants and trees have drastically changed carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in Earth's atmosphere. And all of these changes? Well, this has been due to photosynthesis, which we'll now look at in much more detail. Production of oxygen started by microorganisms using photosynthesis. Remember, a microorganism is a living thing that is too small to see, so you need a microscope to be able to see it. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction where carbon dioxide and water react using light to produce glucose and oxygen. The microorganisms first to produce oxygen by photosynthesis were cyanobacteria, and then algae. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Cyanobacteria were the first microorganisms to photosynthesize. They appeared around 3.8 billion years ago, and they lived in shallow tropical seas only a few meters deep. You would find cyanobacteria on the seabeds, where they lived in colonies. Living in tropical shallow seas was perfect for them, because here the sunlight was very intense, increasing the rate of photosynthesis. So as the cyanobacteria would live and grow, they would release mucus. This mucus would trap sand, as shown here. And this sand would block the sunlight. This means no photosynthesis would take place because the sand is blocking the sunlight. Therefore, the cyanobacteria move above the sand to reach the sunlight. This way they can photosynthesize. So the cyanobacteria moves above the sand to reach the light. And this process repeats itself over and over again. As the mucus gets released, which then traps sand, which then blocks the sunlight. So the cyanobacteria has to move above the sand again in order to reach the sunlight so they can photosynthesize. As this repeats itself over and over again, this creates layers in the stromatolites. 
As cyanobacteria are photosynthetic organisms, they would take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and release oxygen back into the atmosphere. So to summarize, cyanobacteria were the first photosynthetic microorganisms to take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and to release oxygen back into the atmosphere. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Photosynthesis was also carried out by a second microorganism called algae, which appeared roughly 2 billion years ago. These green dots represent the single-celled algae which lived on the surface of the water. This is where the sunlight is the strongest, so there is the highest rate of photosynthesis. The carbon dioxide is taken in by the algae, and then the algae release oxygen back into the atmosphere. Photosynthesis is the chemical reaction which both cyanobacteria and algae use where they take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and release oxygen back into the atmosphere. Over millions of years, cyanobacteria form a rock called stromatolites, which is a layered rock which looks something like this. It can be up to 3.8 billion years old and shows the layers of the sediment and cyanobacteria. Plants evolved 500 million years ago, where they used photosynthesis just like cyanobacteria and algae, but at a much higher rate. Carbon dioxide reacted with water in the presence of light to produce glucose and oxygen. CO2 is the chemical formula for carbon dioxide and O2 is the chemical formula for oxygen. In this diagram, we can see there are trees and other plants. And above the trees and plants is a time scale showing 500 million years ago all the way to today. We're going to use this diagram to show how the levels of carbon dioxide have decreased and the levels of oxygen have increased due to trees and plants photosynthesizing. 500 million years ago, the appearance of land plants meant more carbon dioxide could be taken in by photosynthesis compared to what algae and cyanobacteria could do, and therefore releasing more and more oxygen. Over many millions of years, this process continued, taking in more and more carbon dioxide. Over time, this has resulted in there being a lot of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere, all being released mainly by land plants, helped by algae and cyanobacteria as well. So due to photosynthesis by land plants, oxygen levels increased dramatically and carbon dioxide levels decreased dramatically. As oxygen levels started to increase 500 million years ago, this meant complex life evolved as larger, more complex organisms were able to live and thrive where there was more oxygen. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes.